Okay, welcome, welcome. Let's get right into it today. So this is uh, day five of traditional to digital. And I've been doing a lot of thinking about where I, I want to take this series of lessons. And um, what I've kind of come up with is that we need to have <clears throat> a particular curriculum. If I don't have a particular curriculum for traditional... To digital. So if we don't have a particular curriculum for this, hey, happy new year, thinker. Welcome, welcome back. So if we don't have this um, uh, curriculum, an outline to follow, we're gonna end up going all over the place. And I've already started doing that. Uh, the first, Actually, the very first day, day zero on this, I was just kind of jumping all over the place and just adding in as much information as I could. And then day one of this was all about the interface and, um, you know, the hardware I'm using, how to download Krita, uh, setting up uh, your interface, uh, resources, dockers, keyboard shortcuts, things like that. And then day two, we talked about the pop-up palette adding shortcut keys, the, the cheat sheet for the shortcuts, uh, brush favorites, creating patterns in brushes, things like that, Af alpha channels, all that kind of stuff. And then day three was uh, thumbnail compositions, which I think was really great. That's probably in line. And then yesterday I got into sketching and brushes, which I think was kind of out of order for what we were doing. And I want to kind of bring it back to a much more practical approach to this traditional to digital thing that I'm doing. And uh, as much as I wanted to make this as um, entertaining as possible, you know, I didn't want to get into, you know, all the hard work that it takes for <laughs> for being, you know, just an artist in general, regardless of the medium. But uh, the more and more I thought about it, the more it was apparent to me that through these fundamentals, through these foundational uh, items is where we need to actually uh, begin. And if we can do that within a traditional space within or within the digital space sorry not the traditional but within a digital space um, it will help us in you know multiple ways everything that we talk about here as far as um, composition drawing form perspective light and value color edges texture all that kind of stuff it really is beyond medium so it doesn't matter what medium you have or what medium you're working with, these fundamentals are necessary. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you through the outline that I created. I worked on this uh, for a few hours. Um, and we're going to look at the pathway that we're gonna take, the step-by-step -step pathway. So where this begins is with, uh, let's say number one, Let's just say number one. And you guys get to see how bad my penmanship is. Where we begin is with idea. So the idea. What do I mean by idea? Uh, all art starts in your head. It all begins in uh, your brain. So normally you have an idea first, maybe um, maybe it's you have it fully completed in your head, right? You know exactly what it's gonna look like, all the colors, all the drawing, everything, and you just have to put it on canvas, whether that be digital or traditional. Or maybe you are struggling to come up with ideas Maybe you're struggling to 
um, even think of anything to paint or draw. And I think a lot of artists kind of fall into this. I know I have for years. And what we end up doing is just, you know, random stuff that really doesn't help us maybe in, in a lot of, in a lot of uh, instances. So let's go through, and we're going to focus on this one today. Um, but what I will do before, before I get into this specific, I'll show you the entire outline of what I'm going to focus on. And so if, if I were to create, so shift B, if I want to create some straight lines, hold shift to make the line straight. So it's going to be number one is idea. And this could take us, you know, several streams to get through this. Number two is composition. And like I said, these are fundamentals. These work with, you know, no matter what medium. Number three, drawing. And why am I putting this at number three? Many uh, artists start here. They start with drawing. I feel that that's incorrect. I think that what's more important than drawing is your idea and your composition. Getting the, uh, the two before that figured out um, and, and getting uh, um, some skills within idea generation and composition will only help your drawing, will only help your motivation in every, in every way. And then after drawing, we have form. Understanding form, you know, drawing is about dexterity, measurement, proportion. But then the deeper understanding of form within space is beyond that. It's uh, an aspect of it, and it comes, it's more internal than anything. Number five is perspective. Everything in our physical world has perspective, no matter how organic it is. And we can only help ourselves by understanding perspective well. Number six is light and value. And both are tied together. Where you have light, you have value. And that's everywhere in our world. But these, uh, if I stopped here, that would be enough. So drawing form, perspective, light, and value. You understand drawing, you um, have trained your dexterity, You've trained uh, the ability to measure and to repeat what you see from three-dimensional into two-dimensional or from two-dimensional into two-dimensional. You have an understanding of proportion. doesn't have to be perfect in any of these. And then you get further understanding of the form and how it exists in space, right? So like uh, you draw a head and then you think, oh, well, I need to turn that, you know, 20 degrees to the left. Well, I understand form so I can do that. I don't need to search for a picture. And then perspective will inform that as well. And then you light it. So now that you've drawn it, how does the light play over it? So, and that's really all of it. I mean, that's the major portion of everything, but we can't forget color. So color has its own aspects, hue, saturation, value. Uh, just those three things, but there's an infinite level of customization and things to talk about within color. And then things that are forgotten about a lot. Uh, number eight, edges. We forget a lot about edges and how important they are. Hard, soft, lost. If you want to get uh, any digital or traditional art piece to look uh, convincing, Edges are really helpful. And then another thing that I know artists forget even more, especially when working digitally, is texture. Texture is really important. So this is what we're going to be focusing on. This is going to be the uh, outline. And we're going to take each one step by step. And however long it takes to get through each one and to... Uh, explain out every piece of information that I know, that's how long it's going to take. 
And I'm going to try and keep each of these live streams at a maximum of an hour. I tend to go way over and that's going to help me uh, stay focused on, ex you know, delivering as much value within every second of this. So that's the whole outline. And let's get back to idea. But before that, Thinker says, sounds like a great plan. Looking forward to it. I suggest you indicate places where Krita makes each phase easier or harder. Yes, that's a great idea. Let me make a note of that. So I have a little sheet here that's off screen so I can make notes. Where does Krita make each section easier or harder? And that will be questions that we answer definitely. And I can tell you right away, idea generation, the very beginning of this whole process, digital is the king for this. And even composition, really the king for this. Um, the first two things are, you know, digital is where you want to be because you can quickly generate ideas, quickly figure out compositions, and get to something that is going to create a good piece. So ideas begin in your brain. So you, you have an experience. Um, maybe it's an emotional experience. We pull from uh, our life or our lives. We pull from our lives and this is what we create our art from. And this is uh, really important because we want it to be centered around our experiences and our lives. This is how we generate style, you know, individuality. Uh, and everything that makes us us, right? you know, me, I, and separates you from everyone else. Um, this is what's really important. Center it around our lives and you don't have to really worry about style anymore because if you create art based on what you like, what you love and what you experience and all these different ideas, all these different concepts, uh, it will be ultimately you. So ideas start, start here. And this is where we're starting because every piece, everything that we want you to do after this, it has to come from the wellspring that is you. And one of the first tasks, the one of the first practical tasks that we need to do for idea generation is to uh, gain an understanding of the type of art you love to look at and create. So here's the question. What art do you love? And what do you want to create? So what do you love? What do you want to create? And usually the answer to that is, I don't know. I have no idea. Well, I have some very, a very practical approach to how to figure this out. And it begins with what I've talked about before is collecting other artists work. Collect artists work. This is where it begins. So, you know, We'll talk about where and how right now. So where to collect artist work? And this is where digital is the king um, because we collect art easily online. I mean, I remember before computers were really big and the internet was really big. I mean, I had to go to the library and look at books and then photocopy out of the books or go to actual museums. Now I have just folders and folders full of art. For example, I have 
um, in my Google Drive, I have an archive. I call it Art Screensaver because I used to, and I think this is really important, uh, or could be really helpful for you, is I used to have a screensaver um, that would look into this folder and, you know, when my screen would go dark, it would just show a bunch of artwork. And, you know, that really doesn't happen very often because I'm on my computer so long right now, or like all the time. But it was nice to always get this reminder of, you know, this beautiful artwork that shows up, okay? So where, where do I mostly collect all this artwork at? Um, let's look at a few websites. Right now, because I'm very influenced by digital art, uh, one of the very, very first websites that I look at is ArtStation. And I think everybody is pretty familiar with ArtStation. Uh, in my opinion, this is, um, you know, as long as they get through the AI thing, which it looks like they're getting better at that. Um, this is the place where the art movement is actually happening right now in, in our, our time. Because these are artists that are actually working in an industry. And if we look through the history of art, the artists that have made the biggest difference have been the artists that are working every single day and getting paid for it. And most of these professional artists are doing this. If you work eight hours, 10 hours a day at a job doing artwork, you're going to get darn good on everything. And this is influenced by our current media, movies, TV, games, everything. So looking here is actually uh, fantastic. The other place that's really nice is the Google Art Project. Uh, maybe it's Google Arts and Culture. I think they changed it. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. It's been a while since I've been here. Let's search for Rembrandt. Look at that, it's right at the top. Maybe it's one of the latest ones I searched for. So Rijksmuseum in the, um, oh my goodness. Rijksmuseum is in Amsterdam. I've been there twice in my life and it's both, both times it's been absolutely fantastic. I really loved uh, visiting uh, Amsterdam and especially the Rijksmuseum. Uh, this is actually Vermeer. That's Vermeer. Oh, I just clicked on Reich's museum uh, or the Reich's museum. But what's really great about the Google Art Project is you can come in here and zoom really far in to every little brush stroke on this painting by Rembrandt and really see um, how Rembrandt worked this painting up. Vermeer, all kind of, I mean, just uh, super high resolution resolution imagery. There, uh, check out National Galleries. So National Gallery, Washington, D.C. Uh, one of my other most favorite uh, galleries on the planet, National Gallery, Washington. And there are many paintings in here where you can get high resolution imagery of as well and kind of pull down. Also, um, Wiki. Uh, Wiki is wonderful for this. So I could look up Albert Bierstadt paintings. And you have to be careful here because there's some, like, uh, well, you can go to albertbierstadtart.org, but this is a company that creates this website so they could sell prints to you okay and it's there's a lot of ads everywhere and things like that so be careful with that but if you go to the wiki page for albert bierstadt there's normally a um a link here we go list of works by albert bierstadt and you can get to this list of works and then see everything in a uh, chronological way, which is, you know, really nice. Um, 
I love this for doing research on artists, like the art history of this artist. So, so look, this is beautiful. Let me click on here. And then I get these super high resolution images that I can just right click and save image as to my computer. Or if you um, don't do that, you can hit this little download button over here. And look, it's a 3,000 uh, by 4,000 pixel image. So these are fantastically large images. And just, you know, look at art. Look at art and look at what you love and begin collecting what you love. Um, all over the internet, everywhere, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It could be, um, you know, ancient art. It could be contemporary art. It could be modern uh, art. It could be anything. It could be pornographic if that's what you're into. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Just look at the art that uh, influences you and that you want to make and begin collecting it by either, if you're on Windows, another great thing is because you'll You'll get to some websites where um, maybe you can't get the image downloaded. But on Windows, if you hold uh, Windows key, Shift, and S, you'll get presented with this, and you may not see it, you'll get this cursor to be able to select an image. And you'll be able to clip images directly. And then you can save those wherever you want. So that's Windows key, Shift, and S. And that's part of Windows 10. So it's like there um, to get screenshots really easily and quickly. So that's really nice. Now, when you collect them, I would suggest I used to, and you can see in this folder, they're just kind of thrown in here everywhere, a lot of them. And the problem with that is it's, it's hard to find a lot of things. I would, I would name a bunch of them, like uh, for Andrew Wyeth, but it's much better if you get, keep them a bit organized into folders uh because there's a lot of um, artists in here are paintings that i look at and i don't remember where they come from they have some weird name or something like that and you want to be able to easily uh, reference these these paintings again or the drawings or whatever you have so uh, keeping a folder uh, is nice to and check out artist websites so this is craig mullins uh, the godfather of digital art and he has just fantastic um, images all over his website that I pulled down and yeah as you can see here this one has got some strange name to it if if I loved this drawing right um, I wouldn't really know where to go to to actually do research on this artist I don't have a name so when you pull them down keep them a bit organized so that's where to look, and this is how to collect them, and just have images, 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 uh, as much as you can, and keep looking at them. It's a great place for reference. Um, you could even, uh, I keep them on Google Drive because you can use uh, the search feature in Google Drive if you're looking for a landscape uh, or something like that. Uh, Google Drive will actually search by what the image is itself so that's really helpful so collect art artist work of that you love now the practical aspect of this is something i've done before i've done previously and i'm going to show you that and i actually did a video about it let me bring that in i have it in another browser so on um November 17th this year, I was kind of at a different space in my art career and figuring out what was going on because um, I, I wasn't really knowing what I wanted to do. You know, after 10 years of art, I still don't have like this huge body of work of cohesive art. And I was wanting to figure that out. So I was... Uh, wanting to figure out what I love and the styles that I like and center my art around really what I love. And that's what I was figuring out. So what I did is I started uh, going through all the images I had um, and really picking out those top main artists that 
really signify what I want to do with my artwork. So um, I say here, but after going through a ton of, of works, I've realized that if I add artists here just based on their amazing ability, okay, so I'm getting deep into it here. So I need to figure out, uh, define the style that I like in other art, then maybe I need to identify with other pieces uh, out there that I have a that have a look that I would like to have in my artwork. And so this is what I'm doing. And what I found is, you know, there's just a thousand, like there's so many artists that I love. So if you base this completely on their ability, you will have a list of, you know, 10 million pieces and you won't get anywhere. So you just have to assume that every artist that you're collecting has amazing ability. Okay, because if you love it, normally, you know, most of the time they're going to have just, you know, an amazing um, ability to actually do what they're doing. So I'm basing it more on, you know, what I love about their treatment of the fundamentals. Okay, so everyone's wonderful at these fundamentals, but what do I love about it? So I started listing these artists. So the first one was Jennifer Gennari. I loved her brushwork and the subject matter of the one painting, this one painting heel. Most of her work is animal portraits right now, mainly because of her amazing brushwork. So she does these just absolutely fantastic um, animal portraits, but I love the brushwork on here. And that's what I said, that's, that's, I love the brushwork. And that's for Jennifer Gennari. So I go on to other artists. This, this artist, uh, rich colors, loose brushwork, simplicity of form, uh, high contrast lighting, right? Uh, high contrast lighting for this one. And then I just start going through and I add a bunch from ArtStation. All these artists that I really love, just, just fantastic. And that I really respond to. All of their art resonates with me in some way. And then, and, and then after that, I went through and I did a search throughout this whole document and I found the words that were repeated most and I put them in order. So the words that I describe, so high contrast, lighting, rich brushwork, uh, you know, a presence of narrative. So high contrast was mentioned 15 times, narrative 10 times. Simplicity and simple was eight times, either that's brushwork or composition, right? And then brushwork itself was five times and then rich colors. That's what I mentioned most. And these are the top artists that I love. So these are the top aspects of the fundamentals that I wanna keep in my artwork. And then I created a statement. Um, and I was thinking about small paintings so small paintings with high contrast lighting with a figure in a scene that has a narrative with simple and effective design and brushwork with rich colors. Um, and that's the statement that I created. So just to break that down to you into a step-by-step -step fashion, here's what, we, what you would do. And I'll write this here. And this will be like the, the task for you. The first task. Uh, number one, collect art that you love. And you probably already have a bunch of collection of art. If you do, this, this will go a bit faster. But take your time with this one. So collect the art that you love, okay? Get it in a folder somewhere or collect it on a website. I know like ArtStation, you can do collections on ArtStation website within your profile. Um, Instagram is a great place. I mean, just look at the artist that you're following, pull images from there and just get it collected. And then number two, um, you want to create a document with all with images of that artwork, with all the art that you love the most. So. Create a doc, doesn't have to be Google Docs, with images. Just as long as you get it in some kind of list format. And you can just collect all the images at first, right? Just put all the images in there. And then number three is uh, write. 
Write a short sentence. Of why you love the work. And this is for each piece. Okay, so for ev every single piece that you list down there, write a short sentence and point out like, um, I, I love the texture. I, I love the complexity. I love the simplicity. I, I love the high contrast. I love uh, the low contrast, the gray colors, the bright colors. You know, you're you're kind of describing and getting an understanding. Uh, let's let's take an example of this. Maybe I'll just pull up any one of these pieces at random, whatever my mouse jumps on. Okay, uh, Frederick Church or Frederick Brown Church. So this is his painting of Niagara. I, I, can, I knew that right away because I saw this in person, right? So if, if I was looking at this, what do I love most about it? The simplicity, uh, yet, yet epic nature of the composition, uh, which is fantastic. Simplicity, yet epic, uh, epic perspective. Yeah, simple composition, epic perspective. Do I love the colors? I mean, the colors are fairly subdued, not a big thing. Do I love the values? You know, it's just kind of like an overall blah value, you know, so that's not huge for me. Um, is there a lot of drawing here that I can get into? No, a lot of form, and eh, not really. It's just a beautifully simplified, epic composition. Just wonderfully simple, right? Let's do another one, this is fun. Oh, this is Hopper. So this is Edward Hopper. Again, uh, simple composition, beautiful narrative. Uh, Hopper is amazing at narrative. Uh, he's not the greatest figure artist uh, at all, but it doesn't matter because he communicates some story that uh, everyone loves. So think or ask, have you found that the art you love changes over time? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, there's some greats that will continually stay for you and for me and for everybody. There's certain art that you keep coming back to that you're just like, wow, this is just so good in so many different ways and I still love it. Some artists that you will love and at the beginning and you'll find out that, well, you know, their artwork was kind of surface oriented more than anything. It was pretty... It looked good, you know, it was very skillfully done, but it didn't say much beyond that, right? And let me see if I can find an example of what I'm talking about. So here, here's actually a good example. So this is Chris Knight, a very a contemporary artist, a fairly young artist, but I loved his portraits that he was doing. Um, had some interesting narrative, but... I think it was just because I saw something new and different, especially uh, this portrait here, how he kind of treated the colors and all that. It's more about drawing. I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty a fantastic idea. But, you know, after that, I'm kind of done with his work. Um, I don't get deep into it. There are certain artists that I keep coming back to all the time. Rembrandt, uh, Van Gogh, um, Bierstadt, uh, especially right now, Bierstadt is, is big for me. Uh, the, the new thing for me is, uh, you know, artists on ArtStation. I start collecting, you know, just, I have, a, I have a whole separate folder for artists that I'm collecting on ArtStation. Um, because it's, I don't know, it should probably be in the same folder, but yeah. But yeah, I, it does change over time, but th there's, there's uh, artists that stand out all, all the time as well. So where were we at on the task? So collect... A bunch of art create a doc and throw in the images that you love the most um, of how they treat the fundamentals don't look at just pure skill you're going to assume that everything you collect they have the skills right and then write a short sentence of why you love uh, the work and do that for each piece and number four 
Uh, hopefully you're in some kind of document that you can do searching over, but uh, find words that are repeated. So you'll search for things and you, you'll know this because if you do this all in one day within the next, you know, because once you have them on a document, going through them and writing the statements for them would probably take you at maximum an hour, depending on how many you have in there. But, and, and you know, with you really looking at each piece and thinking about it. And, and as you do that, you will know what you've repeated over and over again, right? But then search for it and count and then count them and put them in order. And within that order, you'll find just like uh, I did. Let me see if I can alt tab to it again. You will find the, the words that you repeated most. So high contrast, narrative, simple, simplicity, brushwork, rich colors, that's for me could be completely different for you. Um, it could be exactly the same. It's, you know, it's perfectly fine. But this is probably the most important is getting this understanding, you know, gaining an understanding of the type of art you love to look at. And through that, you'll gain an understanding of the art that you want to create. And then uh, we can ask even more questions um, after this. Let me move this around over here so I can actually write better. <laughs> and actually, let's do it this way. That way I don't have to write and I can, uh, I don't have to do the really terrible penmanship. And I can show you one of probably the, the worst tools of Krita, which is the text tool. It is not good. <laughs> Photoshop is so much better for this, right? Um, so I'm just gonna copy it directly from here. Oh wow, that got big. There we go. Okay, so uh, repeating that goal again uh, gain an understanding of the art that you um, love to look at and that you would like to create yourself, the art that you love. Collect the artist. Uh, here's a question. What subject matter do you love most? You know, write that down. What subject matter do you, does, does resonates with you the most? Um, I would suggest that whatever art you do, and whatever art that, well, whatever art that you're looking at, that you focus on the narrative. Is there a narrative? Does it have a story? Is it facilitating an emotion within um, the person looking at it? Does it have the ability to do that? I, I think that is, if you look at the greatest artist ever, like if you just do a Google search for, you know, greatest art ever, Inevitably, everything that you look at will have uh, some kind of narrative to it. It'll have a story. It'll have some kind of emotion behind it. And that, that this is the art that sticks with you forever and with your audience forever. Uh, we've already kind of hit on this. What kind of lighting? High contrast, low contrast, bright, dark, high key, low key, mid key, whatever uh, you think about within this. Um, what kind of stories? when you go into the narrative. What kind of stories do you like? Is it uh, sci-fi? Is it fantasy? Is it contemporary? You know, I prefer stories of real people right now. Is it otherworldly? Is it uh, not even in our world? Or is it stories based in um, manga, Japanese animation? Uh, is it stories based in, you know, like a world that you created out of your head, that, you know, fantastic. Uh, what's, what kind of stories do you like? Do you prefer simple design or complex design? Uh, <clears throat> and what is the difference between that? So let's look at some of the artwork that I have again. 
I'm going to make this larger as well. I prefer simple design because I think, you know, everything can get more complex from there. But there's a lot of complex design that, that can happen. Actually, let's do this. Here is, I'm gonna go to the digital art because there's a lot of complex design here that I've collected rather than simple design in a lot of ways. And a lot of the, the complexity and design, if it's really complex, it can be broken down into a lot of sim simple ideas. Here's a, a very complex design with just so much going on within it. Um, and, you know, when this works, when you can still still tell a story and have all of this going on, uh, you really have a grasp on, you know, design itself. I think this painting works pretty well. These main trees are um, basically circling the center of interest, right? And that works, that works really well. And then everything else is just kind of, you know, uh, eye candy, really. So that's a fairly complex design. Let's look at really simple design. This is beautifully simple design. Just one main element, two main elements, and everything else is just kind of in the background. Very simple. Um, what is hardest? Probably the most simplest, simple, simple designs are the, the, the most difficult. You only have a couple things to work with or a few things to work with and getting that right um, is, is, you know, difficult in a lot of ways. The good thing is, is we're in a digital age where we can collect, you know, just a ton of artwork and I have about you know, a hundred, well, let me see, 304 items in this folder, 304 different compositions to, to study from. A lot of them work really well, a lot of them don't, you know. Here's a simple yet complex design, maybe more complex than anything. Who is this? This is Ismail Nkeluglu. Oh my gosh, I probably destroyed that name. But absolutely just tons to look at here you're kind of like i don't know what i'm going to look at but this is a very complex design my eye goes right to this person though they do a great job with the circle in the back there and i think that's repeated in a lot of this person's work see this is versus the other one this is a very simple design we have i mean can you pick out the thirds here there's probably the vertical third is there and there horizontal is you know right here yeah, this this person has put this uh, design right on the thirds, right? So looking at design in that way, simple design versus complex design, what do you prefer? Um, and both of them kind of feed into each other. Simple subject matter or complex subject matter? Uh, what's the difference between that, Chris? Well, simple subject matter would be... Um, you know, like the, the one I showed was just one person in a tree. It's very simplistic subject matter. A cityscape, very complex. I mean, you got a million little buildings everywhere, or even a landscape. I mean, it can get really complex depending on all the stuff you add to it. That Frederick uh, Church painting, uh, pretty simple. But any kind of Bierstadt painting would be very complex as far as um, subject matter. Here's another thing, impasto, flat, illustrative, or graphical. What do I mean by those? So, impasto paint is very thick paint. Um, I like I like a lot of artists that put on the paint thickly. Look at Monet's paintings, uh, Van Gogh, Rembrandt. A lot of those artists really throw, threw the paint on. Uh, the first artist I looked at in that list that I had up. So this paint probably isn't put on too thickly, but it looks like it has some impasto. So really like that, those rich kind of brush strokes, right? Uh, graphical, uh, this is not really graphical, kind of fuzzy, um, just colorful, just wonderful, the, the texture within all of that. 
uh, what is that? Flat Illustrator Graphical. There's, uh, let me show you. Here's high key, very graphical paintings where it's almost like just flat color everywhere. John Stone and Art Station is really great for that. Let me see if I can get a larger piece of his work. Maybe I don't have any up uh, downloaded here. Uh, but there's going to be a, oh, here you go. This, this will give you an idea of graphical. This might be John Stone. Yeah, this is John Stone. Um, so see, uh, just very definite shapes everywhere. Very graphical. So do you like that kind of design or do you like, um, you know, a, a richer design, all this texture everywhere and everything going on? Uh, what do you prefer? Thinking about uh, art in that way. Uh, rich colors or unsaturated colors? I think that's fairly self-explanatory. Rich colors are very bright, saturated, yellows, orange, reds, you know, all over the place. Think Monet uh, in a lot of cases. Um, the, the piece that I just looked at was super rich colors, right? And uh, actually a good comparative would be this painting here. Very subdued color palette, okay? A lot of earth tones, right? And then you compare that with this John Stone piece. I mean, there, it's night and day as far as coloration. Which, which do you prefer? Right, so that's that's actually um, a good thing to understand about what you love. And then um, basically what I'm building here is the Finding My Art worksheet, which I haven't really built, but <laughs> I'm talking to you about. And you can build yourself. You don't need me to build it for you. And you do exactly what I did, which is um, you collect your art, you create a document with images, you write a short sentence, and you uh, do a search, find the wor words that you repeat most. And as you're going through each of those and writing your short sentence, think about some of these things. Subject matter, narrative, story, lighting, uh, design, flat, illustrative, graphical, rich colors, unsaturated colors, all that kind of stuff. And that's, that is this lesson your uh, idea, getting to the idea of things. And I think um, that's a number one. So any questions on this while I take a drink? And I'll pause for a moment. I think there's always some, there's always some kind of lag that happens within that. So I'll ask a question and it takes a bit of time. Also, I saved this document while I'm waiting. Yeah, I think what I'll have to do next on this, and, and I'll write this down on my sheet where I keep notes is provide you with, um, let me see, on website, provide you with uh, links of where to collect art. Maybe the, the worksheet outline, uh, questions to ask. Uh, while going through art collected and then you know um, blanks for the top five keywords that kind of thing so I could provide all of that so that it's easier for you to get started on this uh, and really get closer to figuring out you, you know what you love as an artist. And the reason why this is under the idea heading is because if you don't know, uh, 
Oh, thank you. There you go. Uh, this has been fantastic. Speaks to where I am in my own art journey. See question above. Do you also collect photo references in the same way? Have you found that your art knows? Do you also collect photo? Oh yeah. I mean, well, exactly what I'm showing here. I, I, I do the same thing. Uh, I mean, I've done this, this whole thing. Um, collecting them and throwing them on you know, uh, my hard drive. And, I'll, you know, that's one thing I'll probably get is uh, Windows screensaver tutorial. Show you how to set up a screensaver for any folder in, in Windows. That way, um, you know, when you're not at your computer, you can, you know, the screensaver will come on and then just awesome art will just flash by and give you that kind of understanding. But yeah, I collect the art exactly the same way as this um, and you wouldn't believe how often I go into those folders to look at things because it, after I've known um, what what I love and and I have a protocol sheet which I won't show you because it has some personal stuff on it um, it's a digital protocol here um, that I look at every day. And on that protocol, I've written down, you know, those aspects of the art that I love. And I, I basically review it every day, honestly, uh, when I'm looking at my protocol. Uh, it's basically, you know, my, my plan for the day. And then I look at it and I go, oh, well, my, what I love in my art is, is high contrast with, an, with the narrative, uh, rich colors, uh, simple design, simple composition and um simple brushstrokes rich colorful brushstrokes yeah kind of impasto and most of my art will turn out that way especially the high contrast and narrative what well, and figure with the narrative too i mean that's exactly what i wrote did i close that window where'd it go maybe i closed it let's see no it's right here so that that last statement. Oh, that's the that's the uh, the one thing I forgot is writing out your my art statement. Okay, so let's throw that down. That's number five. The brush tool cannot paint on this layer. Oh, I'm on the vector layer. Five. Right out your my art statement okay and you know put it somewhere where you can see it as well and it was a good question earlier as well thinker that that i'm thinking about is um this isn't something that you have to be you know beholden to for the rest of your life obviously that's going to change this is a task that you would probably do maybe once a year, something like that. So you get you would get into, um, you know, maybe you put on your calendar, uh, January first tomorrow. You know, every year you you look at the art that you love and the things that you've collected over the year, and you go, well, how has my art changed? Do I still love high contrast? Uh, let me read my statement. Do I still love small paintings with high cost contrast lighting with a figure in a scene that has a narrative with simple and effective design and brushwork with rich colors? Do I still love that? And if you do, then great. Awesome. Keep going with it, right? Uh, if you feel like you need to review it like every two months, then review it every two months. But always get that um, understanding going. Definitely. Okay. I think that's that's gonna be it uh, for this live stream. We're at 55 minutes in, which is fantastic. It's a good time. And I can't tell you how important this is, guys. It's super, super important to get this understanding of yourself. This will lead to your style, will lead to your paintings, will set you up for a body of work that you can be proud of, definitely. And all of the other stuff, composition, drawing, form, perspective, light, value, color, edges, texture, will be fed by what idea you give them. Okay, so it always starts with the idea. That's where it, where it begins. And the better the idea, the more it's in tune with what you love. 
the more motivated you will be to hit composition, drawing, form, perspective, light and value, color, edges and texture and do everything you can to get those right because sometimes paintings take forever. And if your idea doesn't start out with that motivation that you love, um, you'll stop, you know, maybe at the drawing phase or the light and value phase. I've done that so many times. Uh, this doesn't mean you're, you're like, this isn't a perfect thing to fix that. You'll still have some paintings that fail and you're like, okay, I got to start over on this, but it you will get you closer. Um, don't jump into just drawing form, perspective, light and color without you know, figuring this out first. Okay, I've rambled on enough. Hopefully that was really helpful and practical. And I'm still working on getting all of this stuff up on my website somewhere. Sorry for that. I've been having a lot of trouble with uh, building my website. But I'm working on it every day. Going to be working my butt off on it today to help uh, you guys uh, to get or get all this content to you guys so that, um, yeah, you can improve your art. Tomorrow... We will um, take any questions that you have for this, uh, you know, during the live stream. Thinker, if you're, if you're here tomorrow, and because uh, it's going to be early for me and I'll be here. I mean, uh, maybe I will. Maybe I'll be a little bit, bit late. I don't know because it's New Year's Eve, so <laughs> be out partying. That's not me. But anyway, uh, if not tomorrow, we're going to composition. Thanks for joining me, guys, and I will see you tomorrow.